Hey, what's up everyone? Good morning. How's it going? I just wanted to make a video today on green numbers. You guys know a little bit about it. It is the leading indicator for the game trying to tell you that a item might be an upgrade for you. And if you've been playing the game for a while and you're familiar with this, you already know where I'm gonna be going with all of this, but there's a little bit more subtlety in here that I think warrants worth talking about. So there might even be something where you might've fallen into a trap that you don't understand that we're gonna talk about here. Without further ado, let's just start talking about it. So the simple thing of what the green number is and what it represents, there's two different things here. There is the armor value and there is the damage value of your weapon. As you're leveling up your character, you're generally gonna be looking at this. Armor scales really, really nicely as a defensive mechanic. Even if you're a Sork or a Necromancer, armor is still probably probably going to be your primary defensive layer because resistances are really nice initially, but after a certain amount, there's diminishing returns in investing into it. And then you're just better off trying to find armor where you can. And the green number very specifically tells you if this item has more armor and that's all it's showing you, but it doesn't show you anything except the current armor value on that item compared to what your current item equipped is. So if we compare, it's just 1178 to 1362 plus 184. That's all we're looking at here. There is nothing else. There's no more subtlety. That's all it is. As you're leveling up your character, this armor value is pretty important. You really need to keep your armor up to kind of keep pace with the damage that the monsters are doing. And if your armor falls behind, no matter what else you're doing, that is gonna be your primary defensive layer for pretty much every character in the game right now. This number is also only showing against monsters of equal level. So my physical damage taken from armor is reduced by my total armor value. However, the non-physical damage is reduced according to the armor contribution. Armor contribution is a flat 50%. I don't know if other classes can change this. I only really know it's Sork. If you have a different class that changes this value, even better for you. For a sorcerer, 50% of your armor will go against it. So that's great, right? As you're leveling up your character, more armor is always going to be better. However, I have a perfect example right here of a situation where there is no world where I would equip any legendary that is not exactly what my unique is. And in fact, I'm stuck with an item level 648 because this is the only raiment of the infinite that's ever dropped on my character. If you have a build enabling unique that is mandatory for making your build work and feel really good, if it gives you a ton of utility, that's a situation where you're gonna value that over anything else. Even if this body armor had half the armor and it was item level 500, I would still wear this over a perfect legendary because my build really needs it to work, right? Like being able to pull in all the enemies and stun them like that, like that is the foundation of what makes my build tick. In a situation where there's a build enabling unique, obviously you gotta keep that. However, there's a lot more subtlety here and this is gonna tie into how the weapons work as well. And that is the actual values on the item. This takes a little bit of thinking about, like looking what the stats are on the item specifically. Also, I do wanna call out very, very important. This is not turned on by default, it's very annoying. This advanced tooltip information I think is mandatory as soon as you start getting into the middle to the end game to really understand how this game works, please turn this on. The two things that it enables is you can see the roll values, you can see the roll ranges of what you have here. So you can see the life regen is 146. That's like right in the middle between the 86 and the 207. So this is a mid roll. So before you upgrade your item, you can see if it's gonna end up a top roll or a bottom roll. And that can be very useful for comparing without spending for the upgrade. Because these pants are five out of five upgrades, right? The values are higher, they're higher tier of the rolls. And an unupgraded version of the pants would just have a lower range. But I could see if it's a mid roll, top roll or bottom roll, and it's going to upgrade into a similar range. So at the low level, if it said like 25 to 50, and it was right in the middle at 75, I know that, you know, if it has similar base item power, if I upgraded it all the way, it would end up being right in the middle at like a 146, just like this. That's how you know before you upgrade the item, how similar it's gonna be versus what you already are wearing. We really wanna compare what the armor is doing versus what we're getting out of that. And the big thing that armor does is it gives you damage reduction. So we can look at the armor value and compare what it's actually doing. And the thing is, right, like when you're at level 80, you're probably doing tier 40 to tier 50 nightmare dungeons. So you're not even fighting equal level monsters. So the armor is actually not giving me nearly as much damage reduction here as it looks like it is. This 48% damage reduction is only against other eye level 80 monsters. I'm fighting monsters that are 90 to 95. So the armor here is actually giving us significantly less than 48% against the monsters that I'm actually fighting. Even if it is 48%, we can do a quick little comparison here. So if I take off my body armor, I have 5,300 armor. This brings me down to 4,000. So this entire body armor giving me 1300 armor is giving me 18% damage reduction. Against the high level monsters is probably giving me significantly less than that. Let's round down a little bit and say maybe it's giving me 15% damage reduction against a little bit higher level monster. So these are the explicits on your body armor. These are the unique modifiers that are gonna show up in different rares and anything like that. 
And the thing to pay attention to is you can get flat damage reduction from distant enemies, close enemies, anything like that. And if we take a look at what I have right here, we can see there's 14% damage reduction from distant enemies. And I think this is a very important thing to pay attention to. If this was top rolled, that's 20% damage reduction from distant enemies. If I'm always playing, you know, at distance, I'm trying to not play melee range. If this is top rolled, if this is 20%, that's actually giving me flat damage reduction regardless of the level of monster that I'm fighting. This can actually enable me to, you know, ignoring my armor, fight monsters that are even harder, have more damage reduction, and have it more consistent without paying attention to just this green number. That is all that the green number is telling you when it talks about, you know, the armor on an item. In addition to that, if you are playing a Sork or a Necromancer, a class that doesn't really scale armor in a lot of ways, we don't really have increased percentage of armor in too many places. I did find it on a couple pieces of gear, and I do value this line quite a bit because it makes a really big difference. You know, getting that more armor is really nice. But what I really want to make clear is you want to pay attention to what the armor is actually doing and what explicit lines can do for your character that are actually stronger than armor and do the same thing. Also thing that I want to call out, if you haven't seen this yet, this is a great image by that Jumpy Jumps. It's just a great breakdown of item power range and what the breakpoints are for tiers on your item. So there are certain tiers of modifiers on your items here. There are different tiers that actually get re-rolled as you upgrade your item. So if you have an item that is only level 149 and then you upgrade it for that plus five item power, that will bring it from 149 to 154. And since it goes into the next tier, it actually re-rolls those modifiers and you'll get higher tier mods there. So it's a very important thing to think about when you're getting items that drop. Later on, when all the items that are dropping for you are 725 plus, it's all linear increases. So you don't really have to worry about this. But early on, particularly when you're in world tier three and you're upgrading your character, if you have an item that is level 700, and you upgrade it all the way, that'll bring you to 725 and it'll re-roll everything to the highest possible tier. Now, item power actually still gets increases, particularly with the flat damage and the armor values on the item. So that inherent implicit on your item that gets rolled based on the item power will still increase versus the item power. So you can still roll for better items, particularly weapons. Besides that, for the explicits on your item, that's very important to pay attention to as you're upgrading through World Tier 3 and early World Tier 4. So just to make it extra clear, this item power directly correlates to this implicit, which is your armor value, right? So as you get better drops, as you get higher item power, as you're doing higher nightmare dungeons, you level up your character, then that number directly correlates to the armor. In addition to that, it will also directly correlate to the damage value on your item. The explicits, the lines on the bottom, those will not change. You get the highest tier at 725, but the implicit, that flat damage, that damage per second, that will increase as you get higher base item power from the items that are dropping. So hopefully that was clear. Thank you very much to that Jumpy Jumps for making this illustration. I will link it below for anyone that is interested. And that segues perfectly into talking about weapons right here. And this is a trap that I fell into myself. And this was what kind of sparked the idea to make this video. So the world that I was in for a very long time was I got the staff incredibly early. I got the staff when I was level 65 or so. And as you can see, the values here are absolutely cracked. 808 base item power, 2614 damage per second, really good intelligence roll, crit damage, 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 etc. I'm level 80 now. I have not seen another weapon that is even close to this in terms of the amount of damage that it does. But there's a couple things going on here that I was actually in a trap and I was using this item when I shouldn't have way longer than I should have. And while my damage output went down significantly, the quality of life, the actual build that I'm playing got significantly better by getting off of this. So the first value that I want to call out here is your attack power number. All right, we had, a, we, had a, we had a couple spectators here wanted to hang out. This attack power value is calculated based on stuff. I actually don't know exactly what calculates it, but it's a rough estimation of the damage that you deal. It's not taking into account, like, is the monster close? Is it distant? Is it a vulnerable monster? Anything like that. Basically just calculated on the raw damage of the weapon times the attack speed, something like that. So you can use this number as a leading indicator of how much damage you're gonna do within a very specific you know, set build. But if you're changing too many variables, comparing this number is no longer apples to apples. So you can see that I lose 600 attack power by going from my staff to my wand setup. And my base damage goes from 3,800 to 2,000. I do deal a moderate less damage with this setup, but not nearly as much as you would think by looking at these two tooltips. So it's really important to actually understand the damage contribution that you're getting there. You really just have to do some testing and kind of figure it out. Because my build is so based around cooldowns and there's also mana cost here too, trying to maintain my mana cost, this is absolutely crucial for my build feeling good. The first thing I just want to really call out is 
pay attention to the utility that you get from going from one hand to two hand. The game doesn't really do a good job of estimating, right? It says minus 1400. It can't estimate between one hand to two hand because it's only a single mouse over. You can equip the one hand setup and then mouse over and then you'll see a little bit closer of an estimate. It's really missing a lot there. And then the other thing that I do want to call out is understanding the damage buckets when you are comparing these items. Just a quick clarification. I was a little bit hand wavy in the original calculations in the original edit of this video. And I just wanted to clarify that in this version and make sure that I'm as accurate as possible so you have the best information. So the big thing to take into account here, for example, is if I have 1000 intelligence, that is a divided by 10 multiplier for my character. So 1000 int is actually double damage by itself. Since your main stat is divided by 10 and that's the multiplier, that gives us a 100% multiplier. So it just multiplies the number times two. However, the main point that I'm trying to get to here is that there are severe diminishing returns when you invest too much into something. And let's demonstrate this with a very specific example. Let's say we have base 100 weapon damage. It's a wand with 1.2x attack speed. We have 1000 intelligence, very smart cookies. We have 300% increased damage for our current condition. Could be nearby, could be frozen, etc. Then we have a 50% crit chance with 200% increased critical damage. Then we have vulnerable damage that is also increased by 100%. And then at the very end, we will calculate overpower damage. So we take our 100, we multiply it times 1.2 for 120. Then we multiply that times two because our main stat with 1000 intelligence that's 1,000 divided by 10 for 100% increased, divided by 100 to you know turn it into a flat number instead of a percentage. And then that doubles it for 240 damage. Then we have 300% increased, which is you know 1 plus 300% increase, giving us a 4x multiplier on that for 960 damage. Then for 50% crit chance of doing 200 damage, that is the base 1 times 0.5 times 2, because 50% of the time we're doing triple damage. The other 50% of the time we are doing single damage. So right in the middle, we are doing double damage on average. That is giving us 1920 damage. Then we have 20% base vulnerable damage. That is always there. If the enemy is vulnerable, we have that increased by 100%. So that just doubles it. 1.2 times two for a 2.4 X multiplier. This is the power of vulnerable damage for 4,608 damage. And then the base overpower damage with 50% more damage, but only 3% of the time, that is 1.5% more damage, which is obviously very bad. If it was 100% increased damage 3% of the time, that would be 3% more damage. But since it's cut in half, that is 1.5% more damage. So, you know, for most characters, you basically ignore overpower. But just to put it into the calculation, 1.015 giving us 4677 total damage. Look at the numbers that are bigger. This is really kind of how you think about damage calculations in any game formula in general, is you want to look for where you have the least number of increase for the investment. If you look at the stats on items, generally you're gonna get about you know 30 to 50% increase in whatever that value is. Since my total conditional increases here are 300%, 30% increase damage that I put into this bucket, that is only a 10% increase in that area. All right, there you go. I put it into formulas, so this will be a lot easier. So for example, what we have here is we have 300% total increase for four right here. So if we get a 50% increase, right? If we make this 4.5, this makes our damage go up to 5261. So that's a full 50% increase. That's a big number that we're going to be scaling right there. So let's bring this back down to four. Remember our original damage was 4677. But what if we get 50% increased vulnerable damage? What does that do? Base is 4677 with 50% more on the increase. This brings us to 5261. But if we get 50% more vulnerable damage, this brings us to 5651. And it's the same number. It's a 50% increase for that bucket. And so by scaling the smaller bucket, that's generally what's going to give you the most bang for your buck. You know, the other thing is look at the critical damage, compare this right here. If we get 50% or more critical damage, it's actually not gonna scale it as much as we might like because of our low critical strike chance. So if we get 50 more critical damage, this would go to 2.25 here, which would bring us to 5261. Actually gives us the exact same amount of damage as the 50% in the increase here. And that makes sense. Remember, like it's about the proportional change. So this is 50% times the three, and this would be the 10% increase off the 300%. So since this is a 50% multiplier times that 50, and this is actually the same base scalar number, but proportionally it's a larger number, we actually get the exact same, you know, quote unquote, diminishing returns for putting that value into that bucket. But look at what happens if we get 20% more crit, which we can do by drinking an elixir or just upgrading two pieces of gear and prioritizing critical strike chance.
by getting 20% more critical strike chance and no more crit damage, 20 crit chance, this brings us up to 56 12 damage. 20 crit chance is actually very similar damage to 50 increased vulnerability damage. Maybe your vulnerability, you're, you're really looking to try to get that, but you have a lower crit chance. You might even just be able to drink an elixir that gives you increased critical strike chance, and that'll give you more damage than just getting better gear, than looking for a specific modifier that you think you need. So hopefully this was a detailed enough dive into examples of how the damage buckets work, really understanding, scaling your build, and you could really just kind of put your numbers from your character sheet into a spreadsheet here. And this will help you understand exactly what values you're looking for for scaling your build. You may be lacking something that you don't think you are that is better for you to invest in for making your build stronger. All right, anyway, back to the original video. Going back to the items here, I want to make this really clear. So for example, let's ignore the two-handed example and let's just compare these two one-handed weapons. So on my wand that has values that I care about here, you can see I have intelligence, I have damage to slowed enemies, which goes into that big increased bucket. This is, we're gonna find a lot of these, right? Damage to slow, damage to crowd control, damage to close. This is a number that is inherently gonna be one of the bigger numbers. And we can figure this out by kind of like adding stuff up right here. So if we go to my board right here, we can see that I have 60 plus 33 plus 34, plus six actually for the all damage right there. So you can see I have 335% increased for my original bucket. Since this number is so big, I am proportionally going to be getting very small increases for getting more onto it. So even if I add 60% increased damage on top of that, right, 60 over 335, that's only 17.9% increased for that one bucket. And remember, the proportional amount of scaling you're doing per bucket is what matters. You wanna make sure that you're double checking and finding what your smallest bucket is that you're trying to increase. So while the raw numbers on this staff are much larger, three of these numbers here, 52 to crowd control, 54 to core skill, 52 to close, these go into the big bucket. And so they're not nearly as effective as that 31% crit strike damage on my wand. Now, granted, my staff also has critical strike damage, but my wand also has vulnerable damage. So it's going into the big bucket and two of the smaller buckets at the same time, which proportionally is gonna give me bigger multipliers on my damage. And to make that even more clear, if we look at this dagger right here, we can see it has basic skill damage, which I don't care about, damage to close enemies, sure, and then overpower damage, which I don't care about. Even if this had four values, close enemies, stunned enemies, crowd controlled enemies, anything like that, because it's missing vulnerable damage and critical strike damage, even if I upgraded this all the way and I had a much bigger green number, it would still be giving me, on average, significantly less damage than my wand because it's not hitting the critical strike damage and vulnerable damage. So yeah, the summary there is when you're comparing armor values, Really pay attention to the explicit values under the top line. Understand what you're actually getting for your, you know, your quality of life, your level of skills, stuff like that, versus what that armor is actually giving you. All that green number is really telling you is about the armor. There's so many other values for what a piece of gear actually gives you. And that's very important. And then when comparing weapons, the things that you want to pay attention to is what is the implicit, what's the quality of life, more attacks per second, even for less damage, might just feel better. You get more mobility, you get to attack more quickly. Maybe this will be triggering more lucky hits, more crits, something that enables your build to work a lot better. Maybe you're building around different functionality. And then it's really important to understand those damage buckets and just know, okay, I get my base damage, then I get my increases, then I get my crit damage, and then I get my vulnerable damage. I'd strongly encourage you to click this materials and stats look at your active effects readout right here, add up the numbers and try to understand exactly where your damage is coming from. You know, there could be a world where you actually invested too much into crit and vulnerable and your base increased damage is actually lower. And everyone out there is telling you to go into crit and vulnerable and you actually neglected the base increase. If that number is smaller, that's actually better to invest into. I really just wanted to get this information across. I know that I fell into the trap of using this two-handed staff for multiple days when I really didn't need to. I got blinded by the green number. I've spent the past two and a half years of my life telling people to you know, ignore the raw numbers and try to understand things from a deeper level, from a more holistic level of how your build works. And I fell into the trap, you know, playing a new game myself, I got blinded by the flashy numbers and I fell into just trying to make number go up versus the quality of life of just playing a good build that works in the way that I wanted to. So yeah, thanks for watching, appreciate you guys and uh, I'll see y'all soon, goodbye.